Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and I apologize for the three video day. I really wish people would spread out news announcements over multiple days so that I could have my better video schedule, but sometimes that ain't the way it works. By the way, if you want to keep up to date with all the best in game development news, do click that notification button and subscribe and all of that. And today, the news is Google's Summer of Code. Now, if you've never heard of this, this is almost the perfect opportunity for you to get a summer job as a coder if you are a student. Basically, uh, Google has been for a number of years now sponsoring students summer jobs to work with open source projects and what we are talking about today is the organizations in the summer of code have now been announced and what we are going to do today is take a look at what those projects are then we'll look a little bit more into applying for it or whatever else all right so here we are at the google summer of code and we are going to take a look at the organizations that are here and we are going to look at something very interesting so here there are a number of different opportunities out there and obviously Obviously, I am most interested in the game development related contents. Last year, we had GDevelop, we had Godot, and we had a few other projects of interest. And so I went and scanned immediately. We're in the all categories section, and let's go see the G's. The G's, okay. D, F, L, K, no G. Uh, okay, there's, there's no Godot. Hmm. All right, Godot didn't make it this year. That's too bad. So let's go here. We'll take a look at some of the categories. Let's look in the graphics category. Hey, there's Godot. So I don't know what's going on there. Inkscape didn't show up either. So basically, it does look like they're all categories category is broken. Uh, so if you want to drill in, kind of dig through what's in here, you're going to want to kind of jump into the individual categories because that's why you're not finding everybody for some strange reason. So now what we're looking at is specifically the graphics, video, audio, and virtual reality category. This is probably the area most of the people behind this channel are going to be most interested in. And at this stage, we have... Uh, Apertus, I've never heard of an open source cinema based application. Audacity, this is one of the most popular uh, audio editing and acquisition applications out there. And uh, I've covered a couple times on this channel. If you've never checked out Audacity, you definitely should. It is sort of a Swiss army knife for audio. And then next up we have Blender. Probably do not need to describe what a Blender is, but Blender is huge. Blender is making huge steps forwards and there are tons of interesting projects going on at Blender. So yeah, definitely give them a consider. A uh, couple CAD, uh, CC extractor, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, FFmpeg is a, um, a digital, like I guess, a video decoding, encoding application, codec, etc. Um, free type is a library for rendering fonts. Of course, we have the Godot game engine. I think that's the only dedicated game engine that made the list this year, which makes me a little bit sad. Uh, Inkscape, which is a vector graphics application. Uh, great program. I've covered it a couple times on the channel as well. And then I think we're kind of getting to the end of the game development specific stuff on here. Uh, interestingly, there's Synfig made the list. They're a 2D based uh, animation software. Uh, and then yeah, most of the rest of this stuff isn't, um, isn't really game development related. Now, if you're kind of moving outside of the world of game development and you're just a programmer looking for some experience, uh, the list here is sort of a who's who. Now, this all is kind of... Uh, BS because it's not everything. I, I don't know what's going on there. But if you want to get into, say, like the world of programming, there's some neat opportunities here as well. Really high profile stuff. Boost, the C++ libraries. Uh, Dart, the, the language behind um, Flutter. Uh, let me go on down here. Django is on there. Python is in here. Uh, what else do we got? So I think Lua made the list again. A number of OS um, operating systems are on here as well. Uh, so there is a ton of projects that you could participate with. The Python project is looking for people. Uh, so there is just a ton of companies out here looking for stuff. And then interestingly enough, didn't make the list is Scum VM is on here, which is definitely game development related. This is a virtual machine for running Scum games, things like uh, Day of the Tentacle and so on from back from Lucas Arts era. Uh, they're here. They've been here a couple of times. They, they keep getting good representation. Weirdly, Swift is on here. Yes, that's Apple's programming language. Okay. Uh, it is being ported to other platforms. I'm assuming that's what this project is all about. So this is the list of people that are currently in, uh, as you saw from my earlier demonstration, the fact that the Godot engine is not on this list for some reason. Uh, you're probably going to want to drill through the individual categories and see if there's um, you know, something there for you because there's, you know, it doesn't seem to be as all as all should be. So those are the people out there. Anything you're particularly interested in learning a bit more about, by the way, you can also come up here. And if you do search for Godot in this situation, 
uh, you can drill into there and get a little bit more details about what that particular uh, technology is about. Going forward, we'll get a number of different uh, pitches uh, or of what they could work on for a project. This is kind of a multi-step process. So, oh, look, and when you search for it, then it shows up. This is insane. It's got to be a bug. Uh, so moving on from that, what we can see here is basically the timeline of how things will go. So right now, we are at this one. The organizations were just announced. Next up, we're going to have students applying um, to the mentor organizations. Uh, each organization has dedicated mentors that will be responsible for you know monitoring and, and um, training and hands-on with the uh, students as they go through this process. Um, there will be a review period between the student appraisals. The, step, the accepted students in May are, are paired with a mentor and start planning their projects and milestones. And then you kind of go through the coding, evaluations, multiple steps. And then at the end, there is a pass fail. If you've kind of made it through, it's kind of decided between you, the mentor, and, and so on else. And then eventually, hopefully, all of us benefit from the work you've done. So previous um, Google Summer of Code projects have definitely made uh, the Blender and the Godot game edge better so hopefully we get to see that continue today uh, so this is just the uh, initial organizations are being announced in terms of what you get out of this unfortunately the um, the payment details are not here yet in the FAQ uh, but the qual the requirements the eligibility stuff is here so if you are a student and you are looking to participate you need to be 18 years old of age or older upon registration into the program. You have to be enrolled into a post-secondary academic pro, um, program as of the acceptance date or have graduated between December 1st and the acceptance date. Uh, for the duration of the program, be eligible to work in the country in which they reside. So you, you are doing remote work. You don't have to come to the US or anything like that or the company where the the host is, you, you have to be able to just eligible to work in your own country and not be an organization administrator or a mentor in the program. So you're not allowed to double dip in that case. In terms of people who are not allowed in, uh, residents of embargoed countries, so that would be um, North Korea, uh, I think Iran still, a few other countries like that. Uh, ordinary residents in the United, ordinary resident in a US embargoed country, what is the difference here? A resident of a United States embargo country or an ordinary resident in the United States embargo country? Someone in the comments, please tell me why they needed to have these both here. Uh, or otherwise prohibited by export, um, applicable export controls and sanctions programs. Um, this will probably overlap with these other two as well. So certain things like you can't export encryption algorithms to enemy countries, that kind of stuff. Uh, you can't be an employee of Google or its affiliates or an organization and they are an employee, contractor, officer, or director of an organization or any of its affiliates. I have to feel like that is missing a word or two. And you can't be the immediate family member of a mentor organization and so on. So no nepotism going on here. Um, and you cannot have previously participated as a student in um, a Google Summer of Code uh, two or more times. So you can do this twice, but that is it. Uh, so if you are interested, you are going to need to... Uh, supply these things on the whole. Uh, this is, again, a bit of a multi-part process, but these are the companies, at least these are the companies that I can currently find with the search engine that are looking for students for the Google Summer of Code. So to put it in the simplest TLDR version possible, if you're a summer student looking for a job, you wanna to contribute to an open source project, you can get into this. These are the companies that are looking, uh, they have mentors available. There's going to be a number of projects available. You can pitch a project to them. If they like you, they'll pick you up. You work in the summer and you get paid. Again, previous years, the amount you get paid is tied to the cost of living in your region. And it seemed to be about three grand in cheaper countries, six grand in uh, the United States. So that is uh, the Google Summer of Code. Let me know what you think. Comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.